In today's lab, we will be studying periodic oscillations or vibrations. Waves are a periodic oscillation. Let's look at two types of waves, transverse and longitudinal. For transverse waves, the propagation of the wave is perpendicular to the displacement of the medium. The slinky moves up and down while the pulse travels back and forth to the left and right. For longitudinal waves, the displacement and the propagation are in the same direction. The coils in the slinky move back and forth left to right, and the pulse travels along the slinky in the same direction. Sound is a longitudinal wave. As sound waves travel through the air, the air is compressed just like the coils of the slinky. You will use an oscilloscope to study oscillations. The oscilloscope shows a plot of the voltage as a function of time. The period is the time it takes for the wave to repeat and is measured in seconds. The frequency is how often the wave repeats per unit time and is measured in hertz or one over seconds. Frequency is equal to one divided by the period. The amplitude is the magnitude of the displacement. Amplitude is measured in volts for electromagnetic waves. For mechanical waves, like the transverse wave on the slinky, amplitude is measured in meters. In this lab, you will study oscillations using a loudspeaker, a frequency generator, a frequency counter, an oscilloscope, and a microphone. The frequency generator sends signals to the loudspeaker, causing the loudspeaker to vibrate and create sound. By turning the dial, you can adjust the frequency. The multiplier buttons allow you to change the frequency by a multiple of 1, 100, or 10,000. We can also connect the frequency generator to the counter to measure its output. The frequency is shown in kilohertz, or 10 to the third hertz. To use the oscilloscope to see the wave output by the frequency generator, first turn on the oscilloscope, and then choose English as the language. Once the oscilloscope is on, press the Auto Set button. The oscilloscope will show a plot of the amplitude of the oscillation as a function of time. To change the scale of the graph, you can set the volts per division and seconds per division. Changing the volts per division changes the Y scale of the graph. Currently, the volts per division is set at 200 millivolts. If the amplitude of the oscillation is two boxes, or two divisions, we can obtain the amplitude in volts by multiplying these two divisions by 200 millivolts per division, giving us an amplitude of 400 millivolts. We can also change the X scale of the graph by adjusting the seconds per division. The current setting of 250 microseconds per division means that each box on the graph is 250 microseconds wide. You can also use cursors to directly measure the amplitude and period of the wave. First select the cursor type, voltage or time, and then select the input source, either channel 1 or channel 2. Turn the position dials to change the position of each cursor. The positions of cursor 1 and cursor 2, and the difference between these positions delta, is shown on the right hand side of the oscilloscope screen. If we select time mode instead of voltage, we can use the cursors to measure the period. Delta, the distance between the two cursor positions, is 430 microseconds. This represents the period of the wave. The frequency is just 1 over the period. The oscilloscope displays both the difference between the cursors in seconds and 1 over this difference. Let's watch what happens as we change the frequency of the oscilloscope. As the frequency increases, the time it takes for the oscillation to repeat, also known as the period, decreases. As we change the amplitude, the height of the wave changes. Note that the frequency and the amplitude are independent of each other. You can also use a microphone to look at sounds on the oscilloscope. While playing a note on a recorder, I press the Run Stop button to freeze the graph. I can then use the cursors to determine the frequency of the note. This note has a frequency of around 769 hertz. We can also look at the sound waves produced by plucking the strings on a guitar. How do these waves differ from those produced by the recorder? 